वॉच दिस आई स्पेंड द फुल वीक टेस्टिंग एवरी लोरा फाइंडिंग द बेस्ट सेटिंग्स एंड रिमूविंग ऑल द एक्स्ट्रा नोट दैट डू नथ आई एम यूजिंग द न्यू सेट विद्यू सेगमेंटेशन फॉर अ क्लीन एंड स्टेबल मास्क I can now extend the clip to almost any length using a simple continue motion loop. And after the video is generated, I add one light pass to enhance details so it looks sharp but still natural. Today I am going to show you the full setup so you can do the same on your own PC. First, you need to upload the workflow. I have already created one called Ven 2.2 Animate Advanced Workflow. So now let's talk about the model files you need to download. And for this workflow, I am using Ven 2.2 Animate 14B FP8 version 2. This is the new version that gives better motion control and fixes face drift. For the text model, I am using UNT5 double XL FP16, the same file we used in the older Ven 2.2 workflow. And the VA file is also the same as before. So you don't need to change those. Moving on, in this workflow, I am using LoRa 3 files. The first one is Relight LoRa. It adjusts the light and color so the person blends perfectly into the video background. The second one is I2V image to video 14B 480 step distal rank 126 PF 16. This LoRa helps the model generate a full animation in just four steps while keeping the face stable and motion natural. So if you are on low fee RAM, you can switch to the rank 62 or rank 32 versions. Just choose based on your system's fee RAM. And the last one is Human Preference LoRa. It's trained on human feedback. You can skip it if you want. So, but I didn't see a huge difference. I keep it at strength 0.5 for slightly better natural tones. Now let's go to the reference image section. Here, you just need to load an image of the person you want to animate. After that, we move into the pre-processing section. This part is important to understand. Inside pre-processing, you'll see three main nodes. First one is Onyx detection model. Second is pose and face detection. And the third one is draw VIT pose. And for these, you need two model files, and both files are available on Hugging Face. Download them and save them inside your Comfy UI's models detection folder. If that folder doesn't exist, create a new one named detection and place both files there. Once everything is done, these nodes will scan the video frame by frame. Detecting the person's body joints like shoulders, elbows, and also face points like eyes, nose, and mouth. This makes the animation smoother and helps the model keep body movement consistent across frames. This detection system is new and wasn't included in the older workflow. Next comes masking. Now we are using a new masking method called search video segment instead of the old masking technique. For this, you need to download search 4 b FP16 safe tensors. If you have low VRAM, you can use the FP8 versions. After downloading, save this file in your Comfy UI's models SAMPS folder. Again, if the folder doesn't exist, create one. This new masking method helps you select and isolate moving subjects 
in the video more accurately. In the point editor, you'll see two guide frames, one red and one green. Use green points to mark the object or person you want to include in the animation. For example, if you want to animate only the women in the middle of the video, place the green circle points on her. In the older workflows, you couldn't manually choose the subject. The system would automatically detect the largest person, which sometimes gave wrong results. So now I have solved that problem by disconnecting the bounding box from the mask and creating a reverse mask using the draw mask on image node. This setup inverts the masked area so the pose and face detection nodes only process the person you selected. Now let's move to when animate to video. If you want to change the background, you can disconnect the background hook and character mask nodes. And if you want to keep the background and remove the object, connect them again. So it's, you can say it's quite flexible. When rendering, you can go for 80 steps or 60 steps based on your system's VRAM. Next, let's talk about looping. Loop start helps your video keep running until the full video length is complete. For example, I uploaded a clip with 313 frames at 30 FPS. If you go beyond a 5 second video, the results may drop in quality. So it's better to use the extended method. In the animate to video group, there is a setting called continue motion. I have created a version with continue motion that extends the clip to around 10 seconds. But if you want the video to continue until the end, use the loop method. The loop repeats your animation until all frames are finished. So I calculate the number of loops using the frame count, duration and overlap math node. For example, in this test, the workflow needs four loops to generate the full video. The loop repeats your animation until all frames are. In my setup, I have found 77 frames to be the best value. So try not to go beyond that. If your video is 313 frames long, but you only need 121, you can change it here to adjust the loop length. Now, Let's talk about enhancement and upscaling. I have added two ways to enhance video detail. So when your video is longer than five seconds, the detail enhancer won't give the best results. In that case, use the second upscaler instead. It gives smoother, sharper frames. In my example, I uploaded a short video of three women talking in a school background. I added a reference image for the middle women. That's the one I want to replace with my image. So I placed a green point on her in the point editor. You don't need to worry too much about prompts here. So just write something simple like women or whatever fits your video. I want you to keep the original background so I connected the background and masking nodes together. The women's face, clothes and color tone matched perfectly with the reference image. Everything blended naturally. In the continue motion test, the video extended up to 149 frame and still the face looked stable with no changes. That's the best part of this version. Even at frame 365, the face stayed consistent. 
Now, if you used older workflows, you might have noticed a node named model sampling SD 3.1. You can safely remove it here. I tested several results with it and didn't get any improvement. So I disconnected that node while using when 2.2 enemy and got cleaner, sharper outputs. If I talk about enhancement, I use the Ven 2.2 I2V model again. Set denoise strength around 0 0.215. That means you don't want to change the image too much. Just enhance fine details. From my experience, Ven 2.2 works best for clips under 5 seconds. So if your video is longer, Skip the detail enhancer and go straight to the upscaler. You can choose between the detail enhancer and the R2X Nomos Uni-X Gen Multi JPG Upscaler. Enable one and disable the other. When I compared both, the upscaler gave better results, smoother faces and clear edges. The detail enhancer sometimes added noise when the video was long. So let's move to another example. Here, I uploaded another video and made sure masking was correct before enabling other nodes. So I loaded the image reference from my last test and added a new video clip where a woman is dancing. Since it's a vertical video, I set the resolution to 480 by 832. And this clip has 790 frames, so I trimmed it to 121 frames for faster testing. Because, because it's short, I enabled the detail enhancer again. And after run, the first 77 frames generated perfectly. The face detail was clear and clean. Even when extended to 149 frames, everything stayed smooth. So when I zoomed in, I could see the eyes, lips and facial edges sharper after detail enhancement too. So based on your video length, you can switch between the enhancement and upscaler. I loaded the video to 149 frames and showed how disconnecting the background and character mask, this lets you reuse the same background from your reference video or swap it with another scene. In my final example, I uploaded a short 106 frame clip at 30 FPS. I changed the resolution to 832 by 480 and masked a new woman. Then I enabled the detail enhancer and as a result, the video quality was very good. Clear hands, stable face and smooth motion. If your input video has good quality, you'll always get excellent outputs. So after enhancement, the details like hair and clothing edges look more defined. It blended naturally with the background. Nothing looked replaced or fake. So this is how you can use the Ven 2.2 Enemy version 2 Comfy UI workflow to generate smooth, natural and long animations. It fixes identity loss, adds better masking and supports looping for full length clips. If you like this tutorial, Please subscribe for more Comfy UI workflow videos.